Um, I just got back from Indonesia and Bryce was there with me and Don Levitt, another one of our business faculty was there. And um, we went there originally to work with education and we graduated. Corbin graduated 242 students who walked across the stage and received Corbin degrees. A year before, we had 141 students. So in the last two years, we've had 383 students walk across the stage and get Corbin degrees in Indonesia. And what's powerful about that is that those students are being trained to be um, teachers to go out throughout Indonesia, which is the most populous Muslim country in the world, as Christians, because everyone in the education program is a Christian, to go out and work in the village schools that the um, foundation that we've been working with has been trying to raise up to actually teach in those schools and to train the next generation um, for Indonesia and to give them a Christ-centered education. And they've been doing so well about this is that actually what's starting to happen is that Muslim people are saying, you know what, we're going to send our kids to the Christian school because the Christians do education better than anybody else, including the national schools. In fact, this has been such a popular program is that actually the, national, the Indonesian government has now started to come to this foundation and saying, how are you doing this because we would like to learn from you. In fact, what was most exciting this last time, three national public schools were turned over to the foundation to run by Christian teachers. It's an amazing opportunity to see what God is doing there. And Corbin has been a small part of that. And as we've been preparing teachers over there and watching them, watch, watching them graduate, and we sat there and we watched where they're going to go throughout all of Indonesia. You could see you know, 15 to this city, 15 to this place, 25 to this place. You could see the map grow and see the influence and the impact of being globally engaged. So, <coughs> excuse me. So as we thought about this, you know, I was thinking, man, it's, it's exciting. And I thought, as last year when I was watching 141 people graduate, I said, you know what, I was the only one there. And uh, I was thinking, we got to get more people there. And so what kind of grew out of that was this business trip that I think Daryl shared with you last time, and maybe Bryce shared with you a little bit, was to take some of our business faculty over there and maybe take some business people from here. And then that kind of grew to also maybe taking some people who are in, interested in business as mission. And so we, we put together a trip of, of, of 10 people. It ended up being nine at the end, um, three groups of three. We had three university rep people. So Bryce and Don and myself were the, were the university people. And then we had three business professionals. Dick Withnell was one of them. Mike McLaren, who just recently is about to end his tenure as CEO of um, Salem Chamber of Commerce, and Mike Malachi, who is a businessman out of um, California who has a lot of contacts in Indonesia, and we said we'd like to have you join us. And then we had three people who had kind of the business as mission perspective. We had Sue Prettyman, who's an alum, and she also works for uh, World Vision, and really working with their strategic partnerships in developing new opportunities, uh, especially around microfinance. Um, then we also brought um, John Wharton and um, Larry Sharp. Both of them have done business as mission um, and done some things in the 1040 window quite a bit and developing business opportunities to start Christian businesses that allowed them to present the gospel in places like Iraq, Iran, Kazakhstan, China. And they've been very successful about that. So we said, hey, why don't you come join us? And so we went to, went to Indonesia. And for us, the contact in Indonesia is a man named um, James Riyadi who is, um, Multi, multi-billionaire businessman who is really, in the last 10 years, decided to say, I'm going to take my wealth and I'm going to leverage this to change Indonesia for Christ through education and healthcare. And um, so we, I've gotten to know him. We had a couple conversations. We said, hey, we'd like to put together this trip. We'd like to kind of show other people what's going on in Indonesia. And so what re result was this phenomenal trip that exceeded all my expectations, that I think exceeded everybody's expectations. Um, James Riotti rolled out the red carpet for us, and we got a front row seat to see what was going on in Indonesia. We got to find out that Indonesia's economy grew at 6.7% last year, and they weren't even trying. That's what everybody was saying. They said, we're not even breaking a sweat yet. He said, we think if we start putting our mind to it, we could probably hit 9% next year if we really worked at it. If we had an infrastructure here, we might be able to do more than that. And we started to see what's happening in Indonesia is that in 2008, while the rest of the world got, went down and slid into a depression, nearly, I would call it a depression, because that's really what it's been, Indonesia has emerged from that unscathed. And Indonesia really is now primed to be, it's really where China was 20 years ago. And what the Indonesians are starting to gloat, they're saying, you know what, we're in a better position than China is because 
our population is younger than the Chinese population, and their whole decision about the you know, one child per family rule and the policy that they had is actually going to come back to haunt them. And you can see the Indonesians, I mean, they are, they are primed and ready to enter into um, the global community. Next, this, they just got bumped up to, I think, B-grade investment next year. In 18, a year to 18 months, they're talking about that they will be um, investment grade. So I will tell you right now, if, you, if you're looking to invest, I'm serious, I'm serious. You need to invest in Indonesia, and I'll just take a 10%. Um, whatever you make, and you can just give it to Corbin. Um, in fact, Mike Malachi, who was there, after about the third day, he said, he kind of stood back, and after we were meeting with these people, he just said, you know, you just got to stand in the way here, and you're going to make money. Um, and it is true. Well, how do we know this? Because James Rowdy just kind of set us up for this incredible opportunity. We were meeting with, we met with the uh, Minister of, of Investment for Indonesia, who left our meeting to go do a BBC interview. And we sat down and listened to him talk about his view of what's going to happen in Indonesia for the next, you know, 15, 20 years. And he got about 35, 40 minutes. We're sitting down. It was our group and him sitting there around the table having this conversation. And as we're looking around the back of the room, you're seeing him meeting with these pictures of him with all the dignitaries of, you know, I like, recognize that person. You know, there's Bill Clinton. <laughs> it's like, this is insane. They were meeting with someone like that. But it wasn't just that, it was meeting with people like, you know, we're meeting with investment bankers, we're meeting with J.P. Morgan CEO. Um, we met with his entire Lippo group, and when we sat down and we were kind of dumbfounded as he started talking, we started to see business being run at the global level, um, and seeing the type of profit margins and stuff that they're talking about and how they're organizing their business. It was an education for all of us to see what can be done when someone has a clear vision and what they're wanting to accomplish. We had opportunities to see the schools that he's developing. We got to see the opportunities to see the hospitals that he's running. And we came back realizing that our healthcare system, compared to the Indonesian healthcare system, is woefully messed up. And we think, and we think, why would we, it's hard to say that as Americans, say, hey, you know, I'm going to a th developing country. I mean, we're looking at a developing country where um, colonoscopies were $24. $24 US. And why could they do that? Because they figured out that if you do things on volume, you're going to make a lot more money. And he said, well, hey, man, I had the best equipment. Their, um, uh, their CT scanner was better than the one that we have here in our Salem Hospital. And they bought 20 of them. We bought one. Indonesia is looking at doing things completely different than the way we think about doing things in the United States. And it was a fascinating experience. And it was fascinating to be there at the, to sit there with the top echelons of people Wednesday night, we sat down, and there was on, the, on our itinerary, it said, meet with Christian businessmen. And by Wednesday night, we were exhausted. And I was like, okay, we'll just go down and have this meeting, and I'm going to go leave. And early in the week, you know, Bryce and Don were looking at a magazine called Globe Asia, and on this is, you know, Indonesian, Indonesian billionaires. And there is a list of Indonesian billionaires. We walk into the room, and um, three of the people on the front cover of the magazine were in that room. Um, and as we sat around and started talking, we, and everybody in there, they were all 10 or 11 figure people sitting in that room, all of them Christians, all of them sold out for Jesus Christ, all of them using their, their wealth to change Indonesia. And these were, the, these, were the, these were the movers and shakers in Indonesia in the business community. The largest media conglomerate was sitting across the table from me. Um, the largest construction group was sitting next to me. I can't remember was who was at Bryce's table and who was at the other four tables. I mean, it was, it was mind-blowing to see. And it was what was, not, what was impressive wasn't the wealth. It was the sold-out commitment to Jesus Christ. Because these are men who run huge companies every week. They meet together during the day to gather other Christians and non-Christians together and in studying the Bible throughout Indonesia. Some of them do it twice a week. They'll meet with their group, and then they started another group throughout Indonesia. And their goal is, is, hey, we want to teach people to be Christian businessmen who go out and change Indonesia for Christ and use their wealth to do it. And I could go on and talk about, you know, just phenomenal opportunities and things that we experienced on the trip, but here's, what, here's for us what came out of it. There's three things that came out of it for us. One is <clears throat> we've been talking, and the business department's been working for quite some time on this, and that's business as a mission. And I've referred this several times, and we've been working to define what does that really mean. And, and Bryce and Don and Eric and 
our two new hires and Justin. Uh, we made two new hires, Kelly Gosman and um, Sean Hussey, and they will be probably joining you guys in the fall here. Good, great um, people and get to introduce them to you and, and their excitement and passion. And but we've been talking about what does it look like to really do business as mission? And um, what it looks like is what's going on in Indonesia. That's what it looks like. This looks like taking your wealth and leveraging it, not for your own profit, but to change a society, to provide the gospel. And I look at, we have, that's happening here. I look at someone like Dick with no, who has done that, who has lived that out, who said, you know what, I'm not gonna just take you know, this opportunity, this, this last half of my life and just kind of sit on this, you know, he's, he was the oldest guy on the trip and he was the one that probably burned us up the most. Go, go, go. But it was phenomenal for him to see, for him to see what he's done here and to see what's going on in Indonesia and to come back and said, man, we can do it even better. We can do it even bigger. And for us, that's what's exciting. For, so what corporate like to be doing, it's like we like to be the place where we become the center for business as mission in the Northwest. When people talk about business as mission, they come and say, hey, how does, you know, what does corporate have to contribute to it? Not that we're the ones doing it, but we're the ones helping network people who are doing it and helping us talk about, hey, how do you do it and how do you do it better?